Howdy all you Monday maniacs, it is Monday, Mondays with Mark. Everybody, welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you're coming in. Let's see how many of y'all are already here right now. All right, it's going up 72. Come on in, y'all. Glad you're here. We've got some incredible guests today, Bill and Gloria, mainly Gloria. Gloria confirmed. Bill, he just kind of lollygagged in, and he's going to be a part of it tonight, but he's hard to get booked. You know, he's Bill Gaither. Now, my sweet Gloria, you don't see her yet, but she's close by. And I want to tell you, uh, don't forget, you can go over to marklowry.com and get your, if you're into idolatry, I'm selling bobbleheads now. And just put that on the front of your dash, and I will judge you while you drive. You get that at uh, marklowry.com if you'd like it. Let me see. Oh, and the cruise. I'm doing my first cruise, Bill Gaither. (laughs) <laughs> don't wait don't laugh at me if you go to marklowrycruise.com and you, my guest will be the martins taranda green bean you know taranda green married landon bean and now she's taranda green bean incredible singer she'll be there and let's see the ball brothers and stan whitmire and we're gonna have pajama karaoke bring your pajamas and we're gonna have the not so newlywed game we're gonna have fun Come be with us. It's in March. And that's the only thing I'm doing next year. That's it. I'm taking the whole year off. Bill doesn't believe me, but I really am. He's over there rolling his eyes. Gloria, do you believe me? She doesn't believe me either. Okay, so anyway, that's that. Now, we got to check out our foreign correspondence, a foreign correspondent sister, uh, Tori Taff, over there in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Would you welcome, let me go over here. Hold on one second. You know, I am the director video here it is hey tori hey everybody this is tori taff your foreign correspondent on the ground in bell buckle tennessee so i'm standing outside of the banquet hall yet again y'all remember a couple weeks ago i did a thing um it was like the aftermath of a big party okay pretend you remember it was weeks ago anyway i thought i'd show you a during So you can see us running around like crazy and making it all look so effortless. So follow me inside, we got a wedding. So here we are, the beginning of a beautiful wedding reception. First dance, oh, romantic. Okay, you ready for the madness to start? Sure, all day. (laughs) We're eating now. Back here. Hey, you guys. Hey. And you hear those lovely children? Yeah, yeah. Hear them, hear them, hear them, hear them. So, this is Dustin the DJ. Hey, that's me. <laughs> so, when are these people going to get up and start dancing? Hopefully, really soon. I hope they're going to do the bouquet toss and the garter yes. toss. Yes. We're going to play a game right after the garter toss, uh-huh. and then we're going to do some dancing. So, how many times have you heard Cha Cha slide in your career? 172 uh, this year. Thank you. This year. Okay, it's over. They finally went home. It was a great party. The hall is trash. There's popcorn on the floor. I think they trashed all of our props from the photo booth, but it was really fun because just remember, everybody needs a little bell buckle and a wedding or two in your life. Thank you, Tori Tab. This is my special guest right here today, y'all. Gloria. Hello, hello. Gloria Who Gaither. Oh, I love this woman. She is one of my favorite people on earth. My 13 years with the Gaither Vocal Band. This is the reason I stayed so long. <laughs> that and Bill. I love Bill, too. But uh, Gloria, Bill knows you're my favorite, right? Don't tell him. Don't tell him. So, Gloria, what have you been thinking about? 
Oh, my word. Because I always, had, when we had breakfast, remember the two questions I always asked you. What are you thinking and what are you reading? So let's just get right to that. Well, first of all, we've been running around like chickens with our head cut off. We just had fall festival at oh, um, yes. at our campus and it was really a wonderful time. They predicted rain the whole weekend and we didn't have one drop. Really? And the people were lovely, the sweetest people. And they just came from all over the country and was it was just fun. The vocal band was there this year and they did two concerts, one on Friday night and Saturday afternoon. And then the Hoppers were there, and the uh, Neelans were there, and then Woody Wright hosted a, a big tent uh, with all kinds of artists back to back that he had um, in, invited in for us. And he he just he hosts that for two whole days. He was amazing. You know his his work ethic was kept on going. And my and our little grandson Lee, I see little. He's twenty two. Twenty. Yeah. Four. He's 24. I can't believe that. He came here. He tore up his ankle, and so he couldn't work. And so he came home and drove the golf cart and took people all around the campus. And it, it was so sweet to all the people. So we had him home. And you have two events, uh, basically, a year. The Fall Fest and then the intensive songwriting. Songwriting intensive. Songwriting That's intensive. That's the first full weekend of June. And that is something else. We only take 60 to 65 and it's tuitioned and we bring in four very totally different songwriters um, that come at it totally different they may be country they may be jazz they may be hymn writers they may right. be um, gospel writers but they they really teach we get everybody who comes gets three whole hours with each of those four people Wow! so the teachers teach 12 hours in two days and then we have two night sessions that are concentrated on something else. This year, we got Buddy coming back for one of the night sessions, and uh, Michael Kelly Blanchard's going to be there, the greatest storyteller songwriter oh, he is ever, ever. Yeah, um, he just, he just, he's, he's just the best. I, I've never seen anybody match him. You know, when I was a young writer, I went to everything. Or when I was really young and wanted to be a writer, I never was a young writer. I just wanted to be one real bad. <laughs> I went to everything it has to um, uh, come to this, and we're having we're having problems with our Wi-Fi a little bit. Um, so I'm having to resume every now and then. I don't know what's going on on your end, but Bill and Gloria have that same kind of Wi-Fi that uh, Jeff and Sherry had, <laughs> that where you, it almost goes. <coughs> no, it's a little slow, but um, I, but we're going to put this up. If it freaks out, we'll it's still taping it, and we'll put it up later. So if someone's watching and they write songs at home, mm -hmm. what would be some, and they really want to go to the intensive, that's one thing. That's where you go and you learn a lot. What's something you, what's one thing you would say to one of them that... Read. Read, 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 read. Read great pro poetry, read the classics, uh, get a hymnal and read the lyrics of all the great hymn writers. Just because, and I would of course recommend everybody take a, a serious class in poetry. Um, I, I think people say, well, God gave me this. God gave me something. After you've heard it, you realize he might have given it to you because he didn't want it. Maybe. <laughs> so, but but the, the, the discipline of writing, writing, period. I mean, if you want to write prose, read, read, read. Read great literature and figure out how to put a sentence together, how to make it live, how to make it funny, how to make it and read humor if you want to write humor. Um, read... Everything that has been a classic for children, read uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, read Nursery Rhymes, read the great children's books. He's from Canada, and he has other books that are also yeah. very, very funny. Okay, but you're um, reading right now. What I've read, yeah, okay. Um, right now, um, I just finished um, a book called Educated. Oh, my word, it just blew me away. It's this girl's life story, and she is now in her 30s, but she grew up way away from everybody in a family that is, they were um, some, sort of a weird religious setting, and none of the kids were education, but she was brilliant, and so this is a national bestseller. Somebody discovered how brilliant she was, and somehow she took an entrance test and got in to college, and and then ended up going to Harvard. Was it Harvard? 
and and then went on to um, Oxford in England and got her doctorate back in uh, after that. Um, it just is the wildest story. Wow. Um, and that's called educated. What, educated. Yeah. Um, we also just built and I both finished um, this called Madison Park, and it's a it's a man Motley is I think is his name, Eric, Eric Motley. Um, he was on Bush's uh, White House staff, but he grew up in a little tiny town that freed slaves after the Civil War. They they worked enough in you know f like indentured servants and then later their own employment to get to scrape together enough money to buy a 500 acre plantation that was sort of wasted by the war and that's how they were able to to get the property and it still that community still exists and it was slaves that built houses and took care of each other and this kid who is presently you know he he was in the bush white house so he grew up in that community and it talks about how the, how that community educated him took care of him said okay you're our designated college kid you will go to college and you know one of the cute things is that the the woman one of that was teaching him got up in church and she said y'all got any books you got any magazines you finished reading got any newspapers you finished with bring them bring them to eric uh, eric is his name bring them to eric we're going to educate this kid he's going to college so people came bringing him books. So it's a true story. It's a true story, yeah. and it's just charming. Do you like fiction or true stories better? I'm not. I I like great fiction. Yeah. But I'm not a big fiction reader. Um, we're studying in our our Bible study um, a really great great book called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Emotionally healthy spirituality. And what are you learning at the, in that? Well, book? we're just we're just starting at this next week but it's basically saying um a lot of the problems that people have and churches have are because people know the lord but they're not emotionally healthy to start with hmm. and if you're going to have healthy churches and you're going to have healthy healthy fellowships even between two or three people that that love the lord um we've got to have some help emotionally um to heal damage that's been done or or whatever, but um, a lot of the tantrums that people have in churches are caused because people, individuals, are not emotionally healthy to start with. Wow. Or for homes, or home. You're right. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm kind of eager to do that. And the same guy has written one called "Emotionally Healthy Leaders." One is called "Emotionally Healthy um, Churches," I think. One is called "Emotionally Healthy Women," which we might do that yeah. one later on. But anyway. Well, there's a lot of, uh, they tell me that my viewership is mostly women, uh, two-thirds women, one-third men, and women, well, not all of you, because I, when I said this the other day, many of you got very upset that you're not 60 or over, and I do understand you, but, uh, but they, you know, they send you these statistics. How what would that? you say to a woman going into their 60s that uh, they need to be prepared for? Like you, I, I love to say that I'm old, and you get on to me about that. Yeah, you want to be old. I do Listen want. I like being. I uh -oh. love being able to say well, what I'm it. thinking, and then no one they go go. Well, he's old. No. Well, when can I be old? Oh, when you're like 85, you can start. I being can start old. being old. Mm -hmm. See, a hundred years ago, I was. I'd be already old. But anyway, so what would you say to somebody? Uh, I mean, I love. I've loved our breakfasts through the years. That's where I first heard that God was in the interruptions, mm -hmm. and Lord knows I've made. A, I have taken that one to the world because I, <laughs> I love that idea. Me too. It's um, really true in my that, in my life. Yeah, and it has it helped you to accept interruptions better? Absolutely. I think if I had my life to live over, the one thing I would have done was to sigh fewer sighs of exasperation. Like my plan is being messed up and I, you know, that ticked me off. Yeah. Um, but I think that has to come with maturity when you realize your plan isn't necessarily God's plan for the day. Right. And, um, I can give you examples this week, last yesterday. You know, I just you, you just have to say, okay, this has got this interruption has got priority, and you start to recognize that 
this, the, what you were going to do is not eternal. This is. Yeah. And you know, people just happen into You've your life. You've preached that your whole life. Like you used to tell this thing about uh, Benji. Oh, that was Bill about I almost missed the sunset, right? Yeah. Wasn't that Bill or you? Who was that? Bill told that, but then my version is he did miss the sunset. Oh, Bill did? <laughs> oh, poor Bill. Bless this. He's over there waiting his turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, um, no. Well, let me give you an example. Yeah. I was in the grocery store the other day. Okay. And in in indiana i don't know here but the the big white peaches they may come from georgia i don't know but the big white peaches they're like they're this big are on and we both love white peaches they're sweeter yeah and i was buying some putting them in a bag and there was a man standing there and he was probably in his 70s and he was just standing in the middle of the produce looking frustrated and i i was in a hurry you know i'm usually in a hurry yeah but he looked so frustrated trying to to look at produce and i said i said to him i love these white peaches they're just perfect right now and he said really and i said yes and they they ship them kind of green because they don't want them to bruise but i said if you'll put them in a brown paper sack like a lunch sack and keep them two days they'll be perfect he said is that true i said yes it's true I said, try, he said, I will try some. He said, you know, my wife has got Alzheimer's and she barely knows anything anymore. And I have never gotten the groceries. And I, I really don't know what I'm doing very much. Mm. He said, I will get some of those peaches. And, uh, and he said, you put them in a brown sack. I said, yeah, two days. Uh. And then they'll be just perfect. Um, I don't know why I met that man in yeah. the grocery store. But it was one of those things where I knew that he needed somebody to talk to him yeah. as a human being because he didn't have anybody to talk to right now. Right. She wasn't talking back. She oh. couldn't. And, I mean, that's just small, but there are big stuff I know, the, but the small ones are the ones you miss. Yeah, I think the so. The big ones. Oh, gosh, no one misses those. You well, know? sometimes you well, do. Well, when you get a car wreck or you're... Yeah, you look back and it's like, well, An duh. employee is arrested. I mean, you, those are the big ones. You don't yeah. usually miss those. But yeah. when just pa just being conscious of smile to people and, and yeah. help people. A lot of times it's children. But, you know, if, if, you're, if you get more sensitive to that, it is the thing that blesses you. At the end of the day, you know, you say, I don't know why I came. I came here to speak, but that's not why I came. Right. This happened, and that's why I went to Dallas, or that's why I went to New Orleans. It wasn't to deliver some speech, which I think, you know, God blessed, and that was all great. It's my calling. But it, it wasn't why I came. That's right. Don't you love that? I do. I love, I love that. it, too. I love it. And, and the emails, you said you have a, a, a bunch of letters that you have received through the years mm -hmm. from people, because there's nothing we love more than hearing that our song, my song, or her many, many, many songs have touched people, mm. right? And you've got, you've well, kept. Oh, yours is sure touched everybody. You've kept the ones, though, through the years that. Yes, you know, once in a, we get lots of letters or like ne emails now, but, but once in a while you get one, like once a week or once a month sometimes, but you get one and it's like, oh, oh my. Yeah. And over the years, I started a file that said, the song that brought me home. And I realized that when nothing else can reach you. Yes. Songs, a line from a song is the is the lifesaver that somebody throws to you when you're going under for the third time. And you remember yeah. that line. So I'm saying, sing profound songs, write profound songs. Yes. Um, choose, if you're a worship leader, choose great songs. I don't care if they're old, new, ancient, written yesterday, but don't, choose don't choose junk and just because it's got a piece of a scripture tied to it does not necessarily mean the song is memorable if you don't tell the story of how david got that line then why repeat why steal dave god for reason could we with ink the oh. ocean fill and were the sky of parchment made just paper right where every stalk every piece of grass where it were a pen where a quill yeah and every, every man a scribe, a copier, 
by trade. To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Yes. Nor could the scroll contain the whole. Those stretched stretch from, from sky to sky. sky. And what is that? You call it portable theology. It's portable theology. I love that phrase. Think about that. Portable theology. That's what a great hymn is, a great song. Oh, it is. Like when I had my MRI and they thought I had MS 12 years ago or whatever it was. Man, when they slung me into that MRI machine and that right before I went in, they said, oh, they just want to rule out MS. <laughs> and I'm encapsulated in this thing and it starts ticking <laughs> and I start hyperventilating. It was blessed assurance. Jesus is mine that calmed my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And all the scriptures I could remember, like Jesus wept. Well, the letters you asked me about, over the years, you know, you get one that is just, yeah. um, that's how a song brought somebody home. It yeah. went to the farthest ends of the earth or in the darkest pit of your life, and some little line that their grandmother sang them when they were rocking them when they were four years old appeared out of nowhere and, and it brought me home. Let me, can I tell you a story yes, from please, this week? Yes, please, please. We at Fall Festival, Bill and I go in and um, and do a question and answer to. We feed 800 people that buy the gold tickets, and they, we have to split that in 400s because that's the biggest space we have. So while they're while they're finishing eating, we take questions um, and and answer them. Well, Bill had been out the whole week. He had a nightmare week. You don't even know about it. It was great. He loved it and he was happy, but he was exhausted. Yeah. So that morning, I, I just didn't wake him up. I just said, I can answer questions. I'll let him sleep. Right. And so I went to the first session, then he joined me on the second one. But in that first session, there was a man, toward the end of the question answer time, there was a man like in the second table from me, sort of in the front. And he said, keep writing songs for children. And I said, what? He said, I don't have a question. Keep writing songs for children. He said, we grew, we grew our children up on your kids' songs, and they all sang, I am a promise, and I saw I interrupted him, and I said, you all know that? And the whole 400 sang, I am a promise, I great? am a yeah. possibility, saying the yeah. whole thing. And then I got done, and I went back to him, and he said, I have a daughter, and we taught her that. And she used to sing it, and we kept her in church, and we have a Christian home, and we sent her to a Christian school, and when she graduated from high school, the devil got her and never let her go. He said she made every bad choice that you can make. Mm. And he said it has, it has ripped our hearts out, but I want to tell you something. This last week, at 43 years old, she sent me an, a, a text, and when I, when I opened it, it was... Um, she said, Daddy, I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise. And then he said, yeah. I am trying to hear God's voice, yes. and I'm trying to make the right choices. Uh -huh. I'm a promise. And, he, and by then, all these big old lumpy guys that were sitting all around at those yeah. tables, yeah. I mean, the tears were just going down yeah. their faces. And he says, so please. Keep right. For children. Don't quit writing for children. Yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah, and that weird, and that's not one of your, I mean, it's a, it's amazing. It's a simple song. It is a children's song, but how impactful, you know? Well, you know, Mark, it it's is. It's not like it Because is, He Lives. I mean, you expect that one to have an impact. It's not as simple as it sounds. I think we need to tell our children that God made a promise to the universe yeah. with their birth. And it's up to them to help him keep that promise. They are the promise. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. And and God can't keep the promise of them by themselves. It's their choices. It's their joy. It's their, you know, and there's nothing like a child to just oh, cut to the chase, for oh, one yeah. thing. They're totally honest. You know, they're they're looking at over their shoulder at you at church, these little babies, and they're, they're like, if you got a booger in your nose, they'll love go. You. Oh, no, you know? I love that. <laughs> they're just so honest. you got to love that. Well, let's bring in Mr. Bill Gaither, y'all. He's been sitting over patiently, and he's not in control of the program, which is probably why it's not going that good. No, I mean, we're having a little bit of internet problem, but 
Come on over here. Oh, can you get around all that? We can. Here, let me get that over there. I'll unplug something. No, don't do that. I'm okay so far. Uh, can you, are we still on the air, everybody? It looks like it. We've been having a little problem, but I will string all these together if they have a... Here we are. Let me get the microphone over here. We Really, you know what? Let me sit there and you sit here so I'll make sure you're, you're, you both are heard. Okay, now I want to know... There you go. Oh, yeah, get you. Yeah, yeah, get all your stuff. <laughs> Before we get into all this... Can you get that there for me? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah. Right. What's the water yes. here? No, I'm giving them the pictures over okay. there. Okay. So. Y'all look Man. what we're looking at. Pictures of the Gaither Vocal Band. Tell everybody who they are, Bill. Yeah. There. His new group. These people replaced me. Yeah, it took four or five to get it. <laughs> no, listen, tell them who they are. It's Wes Hampton, Adam Crabb, Reggie Smith, and these are the latest Gaither Vocal Band yeah. pictures. Here, let me put one up that I, that I did. And Todd. Oh, did see what did you do one earlier? Yeah, he yeah, took I did one. one. Here it is. Up. Isn't that a good picture? There. Yeah. Look at everybody. There's Wes, there's Adam, there's Todd, there's Bill, and there's uh, Reggie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you really finally got the, the group of your dreams, I think. Well. Because it's, uh, they're, they're, they rehearse, I can't get that off. I mean, y'all rehearse a lot. Well, in all fairness, so we, we've had nothing but great singers oh, and great yeah. talent in, in that yeah. group. And you've got yeah. a, a reunion coming up. Yeah, the You're 19th and 20th of, I'm of, coming, of, yes. yeah, yeah, of, of, of October. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people, people are looking forward to that. And they all have their ideas. I mean, when some, somebody would leave, I'd always get letters and saying, boy, you sure messed up now. And what is so much fun for me is is they'll, they'll come and they'll buy a ticket. Yeah. I remember one night after you left, somebody yelled out, where's Mark? And I said, he left, you know. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so they can't help but compare, and, they, and they've got their own attitude. Sure. They, they've got their own ideas. Right. But after a while, then they get they got to like the new guy. And, uh, oh, yeah. But... Uh, and, and you never replace anybody. You just try to do something different. And, and in fact, I think when you try to replace somebody, you mess up. You get in trouble. Yeah. And so, rather than find, uh, rather than find another Michael English or another David Phelps or another Guy Penrod or a Mark Lowry, you do something different. In fact, one of the n best finds that we've had in the last four years has been uh, Todd Sullivan. Yeah. He has a, a very unusual, beautiful character quality in his voice a little yeah. bit like Lou Rawls yes. a little bit like Nat King Cole and then he can bark out a bass part so that helps me because I've never referred to my part as bass it's always been the other part the other part, the other part. okay now just so I can help my ratings tell me about the worst fight y'all have ever had <clears throat> oh I don't know <laughs> that about was the supposed to be funny and nobody yeah. laughed yeah. I can't wait to see what he's going to say you know, I said, which one? Which one? <laughs> you know, Ken. Do y'all really fight? fight? I've never really seen y'all. I've seen. Oh, we argue. Yeah, argue. yeah are y'all no, not fight. But yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Ken Davis one time was speaking and and, <laughs> and said, you know, any marriage is going to have arguments, right? Yeah. And some guy came up and said, my wife and I have been married for sixty-five years, and we've never had an argument. <laughs> and Ken said. My friend, if you've been married for 65 years and you've never had an argument, one of you is dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we, had, all, we all, had five artistic people in our yeah. family, oh, yeah, all of whom had great and strong opinions. So sure. try that on for yeah. size. Oh, yeah. You know, most of our arguments have been over two things. Priorities, you know, what we think like, is important. Why did you say yes to that? Like, why did you tell him we would do this? Right. You know, or, or you know, I don't care what this is. I mean, Bill, why are you going out again? Why did you spend, just last week, why have you spent two or three more days in the studio? Yeah. And I tried to explain to her that I'm taking these ideas that we do around the piano 
and put it in, 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 you know, in the mouths of real communicators and people who could really sing, that can make a difference. But you don't have to explain that to you me. You don't have to explain that it, to her. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. Well, but oh, which oh, day you did it, that yeah, was the yeah. problem. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so priorities, how we're managing time, yeah. and how we're handling kids. Now, you wouldn't know anything about that. No, I wouldn't. But I tell you what, if you've got kids... I mean, you both want the best for your children. Sure. And you always get in trouble on what is the best way to get it done. Right. There's so, always yeah, going to be... how to do it, not, not that we want this result. Yeah. But, but kids are so different. Yeah. You know, you're just like, oh, that, didn't, that worked with him, but not with are that. Are the kids and, ever grown and out of your hair? Never, never. No, I hope in, not. In, 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 oh. fact, in fact, my mother was 87 when she died. And a couple years before she died, I said, when does this get... You know, raising kids ever get over? Says so you're going to have to ask somebody older than I am. Oh, really? <laughs> so once you have kids, it's done. You're done for. You, no, till you, you know, die, you're going to worry about them. But it, in a way, you you want you want to stay involved. You know, at this stage, you know, our our joy is when they call and they say, "We want you to come to be a part of whatever we're doing." Oh, you know, yeah. that's the best part. I'll tell you what is also the best part. Uh, last week. Amy and Suzanne spent three days together just the two of them and when your kids call each other and they want to be together and they they That's don't great. without yeah. you right. you didn't have to plan it you didn't cook the food right. you didn't make the beds they they that just shows you've done a good job and they choose each other to be friends yeah, yeah. that's to me well, that's my brother the best thing. my brother for the first time is coming down to spend Thanksgiving his wife is going to Georgia with her mother to see the siblings there, but he's coming to be with me on Thanksgiving oh, cool with Christopher, his son. Yeah. And it like to killed my brother because he's never been away from his wife on Thanksgiving. But she said, no, go, go, be with your brother. Isn't that nice? That's mm. great. Oh, you'll have fun. We, I love them. Yeah, mm. we're going to ride scooters. When are you going to come ride some scooters? Are you going to cook? The last time I rode a scooter, I was... Was I with you <laughs> no, and, and Cayman? Yeah, but I was with you right after. I still had the scar. Yeah. He went sliding across some gravel, right? Yeah. Benji made the turn, and I didn't make it. And I didn't make it. And he, there was a the post. Slide. There was a sign at the side of the road that somehow moved and got right out in the middle of the road, and I hit it head uh -oh. on. Right? Remember? We were I in remember. Buffalo. We were in oh, Buffalo. We, 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 we were in Cayman on, on, on Wednesday or Thursday, and then... On Monday, we sang at the Buffalo Klein Sand Music Hall. You I'll never forget it. He looked like a walking scab. <laughs> it he was really, about half his leg. Oh, it was awful. And so I was, okay, let's get into this. I want to. I want to. I want to talk about. You say you're writing new songs because you called me the other day, which you're always excited. I love Bill Gaither because if you're in a bad mood and when he calls you, you'll be in a good one because he's so excited about everything going on in his 82 year old life. Because it's more than most eighty-two-year-olds, I will give it that. But you've written but one new of the songs. reasons. Yeah, one of the reasons is I, you know, I, you know, I hear music, and people say, "What do you think about the new praise and worship music?" Okay. And I say what most people were saying when we were writing songs back in the fifties. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, you know, right. and you know, and and. Uh, and that's always been the case. Mm -hmm. We only remember the good. good. Right. We talk about Fanny Crosby writing 6,000 songs. You name five, we sing. Yeah. And it will stretch you. Yeah. Well, what happened to the other 5,000? Right. You know, eight hundred. So you didn't have the right person to write the music. Maybe yeah, so. Maybe. You, know, you, know, I, you know, I don't know. So, you know, you, know, I, you know, I sit around and I listen to some of this stuff. And I say, you know, this is good if this ha had some turns. And so I, I look back at some of our lyrics and I said, we wrote music for that, for whatever reason, lyrics will outlive the music. And, and, and the music that I wrote for this song that was copyrighted back in 1980, just wasn't good enough to translate into the next, gen, uh, next generation again. Yeah. So I rewrote wrote some music, and we went back in the studio for three days in August, two days, and that's a lot of days for tracking. Yeah. And tracked a lot of these ideas. So here is the idea. Yeah. This is her hey, idea. And this is a brand new song called what no. now it what's well, not new, but it's gonna be new because new it's music. Gonna, it, yeah, it's now is forever. Yeah. Forever starts here. My treasure in heaven is what I hold dear. The things that I value 
will show in the mirror because now is forever and forever starts here. God's will for tomorrow may seem vague and grand, but it's built of the moments I hold in my hand. Mm -hmm. So I'm building, so I'll build forever each step of the way and I'll do it by being God's person today because now is forever and forever starts here. And you know, and 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 I've heard you talk about theology and about about the hereafter, and I believe in all that. It, it's in, it's in the scriptures. Right. But I I really think <clears throat> heaven begins the moment we we kneel at the altar and give our hearts to the Lord. And secondly, hell can start with the choices that we make this very very day. And the hell that we'll experience later on in uh, later on in our lives because of bad choices. Bad choices. Uh, bad choices. So I think it's a great. I, love that. I think it's a great. Well, piece. just and, and he's the great I am. He's not the great I will be, but the great I was. He's yeah. only in the now. Okay, so so I thought we got to get that down with some great singers that can take it somewhere. Tell them the story, because because. Uh, all songs originate from somewhere. She went out to lunch with a friend of ours. Yeah, she, she's she been my friend for years. In fact, her dad was a pastor, um, friend of my dad's in Michigan. He's a, one of our strong pastors in our movement. And so we've been friends for a long time, and we were having this conversation, and she said, I'm going to have my grandson for two weeks this summer. She upset his parents, but I'm going to take him into our church, and I'm going to walk him down the aisle. And this kid is like 11, 12. I'm going to walk him down the aisle, and I'm going to explain to him that this is the altar where, where people pray, and this is, the, this is where the pastor stands, and this is the choir loft where the pe musicians sing, and here is the communion table, and, and we, we, we take... Uh, communion and that represents Jesus blood and and body that we want to be a part of our lives and she was just saying she said I said tell me this is not true your grandson's never been inside a church she said no and it breaks my heart I couldn't sleep that night and I told Bill I said I said that I can't I can't get over that and and the fact is, it's not about the furniture, but to have to explain that, that I mean, here is the place where, where we come to the Lord. Here is the place where we dedicate our babies. Here is the place where we end our lives and, and we have married. funerals. This is the place where we say, I, till death do us part. I'm well, gonna, not everybody ever did like this. He had and, and, and so anyway, we just said, oh. So this, you got up and wrote this? This is, a, this is a brand new one then. Brand new one. Come, my child, there's a place. When you're lost, you can be found. You'll be safe, and you'll be long. You will hear the sweetest sound, and you should hear Adam Crabb sing this. Mm -hmm. This is the place where we pray. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. This is the place where we cry. Dum, dum, dum. This is the place where we start till death do us part and where we say goodbye. Very wow, good. I love that. Bum, bum, bum. Here we leave all our pain. Bum, bum, bum. Find forgiveness, forgiveness and, and grace. grace. Bum, bum, bum. Here we walk down the aisle, dedicate every child. every child to dedicate. Here in this sacred place. Love it. And somehow we want to drive home the idea is that the one Jason Crabb was telling me about today? He was in the studio? Yes. Or is it one about an altar? It's, no, it's, this is this the altar. Okay. And, and he heard it and he said, He went crazy. Wow. He said, this is a song. Break some bread. Come share the wine. At the table, there's a place. Bring your fears. Take his peace. Come and share this holy place. And then we sing it again. This is a place where we pray. 
Bum, bum, bum. This is the place where we cry. Dun, dun, dun. This is the place where we start. Till death do us part. Where we say goodbye. Here we leave all our pain. Find forgiveness and grace. Here we walk down the aisle, dedicate every child here in this sacred place. And we go into holy, 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 God almighty, Emmanuel. And then we change keys. This is the place where we pray. Yeah. It's, it's pretty big. It's pretty powerful. That's great. It's All right, pretty, keep going. It's pretty powerful. It's song time. Y'all are hearing brand new songs, y'all. These are brand, brand, brand new. Brand new songs. And this is how you used to do with everything. <coughs> Every song, he comes in, he's so excited. I love that. That's keeping you alive, don't you think? I mean, uh, God, <coughs> what's keeping you alive? Your good health, your walking, your everything. But, you know, first of all. But it's your uh, calling. Uh, first of all, thanks to Dad and Mom, I got good genes. Yeah. You know. Right. And, and secondly, thanks to Dad and Mom. It was a healthy, healthy place to grow up. It really was. You talk about non non judgmental. Those two folks were so non judgmental, and they were just kind. Yeah. You know, and and there was they were, and she could cook too. Oh man, could she cook? And there was peace. Yeah. I think that helped a lot. And then and yeah. they encouraged you. You know. Yeah. Tell. I mean, they encouraged your dad. Never. We would go to family reunions, and everybody, every, everybody yes. in our family were mechanics and tool and die makers. Right. And they worked with their hands, and they'd say, "What's your son going to do?" So well, he's going to go to Purdue. He's going to be an electrical engineer. What's your son? Well, he's well, he's on a General Motors. Uh, uh, Tech. You know, you know, technical uh, path. Yeah. And this kid's gonna do it, and then they come to dad and say, well, what's Bill gonna do? Well, he likes music. Yeah. And the next question always was, what's he gonna do for a living? Right. Which was a very, very fair question. Yeah. And my dad, when I, he, he, he said, well, he'll figure that part out. But my dad and mom were very supportive. Yep. Now, I did go to school and did learn uh, how to teach and to teach English. And I did that. In this very place up here, Larry Gatlin, uh, uh, he used to live in the condo right behind me. Yeah. And he'd come over, he came over with his guitar one day, and we're putting this on, on the project too, and said, let's write something. And I just heard this hook. So we wrote, I don't know why I'm doing this. I, <laughs> I can't play the guitar. So we, we wrote, I thought getting older would take a lot longer than it did. Boom. <laughs> it seemed like day before yesterday I was just a little snotty-nosed kid in that patch of hair that I had back there. Went away and hid. Dun, dun, dun. But I thought for sure, it, but I thought getting older would take a lot longer than it did. That is brilliant. And the, the next, uh, and I don't know the whole stanza, but I thought for sure Jesus would have come back by now. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and and it goes on to say, but yeah. I still believe that one of these days he he's going riding he that horse through those fluffy white clouds yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And then there's one verse that said, <laughs> said, I thought by now I'd have more money than I do. <laughs> <laughs> but God knows best. We've all been blessed with more than enough to see us through. And I wouldn't trade places with anyone else. Mm. Heaven and God forbid. Yeah. But I thought getting older would take a lot longer than it did. I love did. that. I would have <laughs> recorded that in a heartbeat. <laughs> and so we got to the end of the song. Are you going to sing it? Are you, is that going to be yours? Yes, we've already we, 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 we've already recorded it. Yeah. And, and so we get to the end of the song and said, this simple song is just two minutes long. Who we trying to kid? It's But it sure seemed like it took a lot longer than it did. <laughs> That is so funny. <laughs> Don't you know what? <coughs> funny songs. Hey, songwriters, funny songs are hard to write mm -hmm. because you can't tell the same joke over and over, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, but that is brilliantly funny. I mean, to me, that's a that's. I wish I had about ten of those. I'd make a whole album of that. Okay. I, so, so, I thought for sure Jesus would have come. <laughs> yeah. Who didn't? Now your good friends and my good friends, are, uh, Reba and Donnie. Yeah. They, they come up to the house about once a year, 
and we sat around with hooks. Yeah. And so uh, they said, you got a hook? Yeah. And I said, Suzanne texted the other day and said, because she was going to meet us downtown, and, and her text went, uh, not there yet, but I'm on the way. I like that. That's a good hook. So I, I said, we need to write this. And so we... Is it up-tempo? It feels up-tempo. Yeah, it's not there yet. At least you see I'm on my way. Bum. I'm not there yet. Getting closer every day. Keep on climbing higher. Working and watching while I pray. Not there yet. Bum, 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 bum. Thank God I'm on my way. Love that. And you're doing it in a minor key, huh? Yeah. Huh. Remember when I wrote that song? I'm going to keep on singing. Yeah, keep on, on singing, singing and telling folks what. Jesus, I'm going to keep on writing and mainly in, in the, the major, major key. Keys. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I, give us another one. Suzanne. Our and this is your daughter. Sent us a poem. And at a time where she was really well, down. It was a song. She just, it wasn't. It was yeah, song. yeah. But she didn't have any music for it, right? No, right. Uh, are you okay, sure? read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let me read it. I'm oh, good oh, at oh, reading. <clears throat> okay, read it. All right. Here we go. I've never read this, but I'm going to try to do good. In the darkest part of Scotland, the darkest night of the year, I found a church where lights were dim and set down in the rear. And they sang about a baby. Angel voices filled that place. I could feel the love of Jesus, and the tears ran down my face. Jesus is in the water. Jesus is in the wine. And Jesus is standing next to us in this noisy Starbucks line. Jesus is in Manhattan. Jesus is in St. Clair. He's waiting around the corner. Jesus is everywhere. I like that. On a winding street in Venice, on the sunny side of town, church bells rang out in San Rocco. So we went in and sat down. We forgot that it was Sunday. The priest was hard to understand. We, <laughs> but, we, but we heard the word... For, for, Wait, but we heard the word for, for Jesus, Jesus holding wafers, wafers in our hands. And Jesus is, is in, in the water. water. Jesus, Jesus is, is in the wine. wine. That's good. In the darkest hour of nighttime, in the dark night of the soul, in the balmy heat of summer, in the bitter winter cold, in the halls of every mansion and apartments where you sleep, you've never gone too far. And you're never in too deep because Jesus is in the water. Yeah. Jesus is in the wine. And the psalmist said, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. In fact, if you let That's me my run, favorite song. If, you, if you let me run in and get my phone, I could even play you a little. Well, bit. go get it. Okay. We'll get it. Y'all aren't, y'all aren't in a hurry, are you? Hey, hey y'all, it's working. We got 493 people watching right now. And and Gloria is here and Bill's here and we're in hey, their... Hey, my phone was in my pocket. Okay. We're in their condo in Nashville, which worked out real well, because tomorrow night at 6.30 now, y'all, remember this 6.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow, I will be over with Reba and Donnie at the river. Every time I'm in town on Tuesday night, I go over there, and they'd go live and just sing, sing, sing. Yeah, I, I just watched it. It's so sweet. It's really so sweet. Time. And so I'll be there with them. I love them. W will this pick up the seat? Oh, yeah, right here is the microphone. Okay. You are going to get to hear something off Bill Gaither's phone. Play. And thank you all for tuning in while he's looking that up. Hey, JG, Carrie Lever, Barbara Nelson, Brian Pinion, Brenda Camp. How do you Camp, get the volume up on that, honey? Carrie Ann Henderson, hello. Uh, Sherman Hatch, hi, you guys, for tuning in. Love this. Th I'm glad you do, Lily. I love it, too. I love Mondays with Mark. I love being with y'all, and I love getting my friends to sit down like Bill and Gloria and just talk to us and that you get to sit in on this too because it is so much fun I've loved you this for that. years I uh, but now I get to share it with all of you and I'm so glad let me help you okay okay okay, okay. okay. Have to, sure okay the volume's got to be up yeah oh you know what I can text now too 
When did you start doing that? I hold it down, and that little lady, she'll help me. <laughs> she, she, she says, you know. Something's it, wrong here. But she, she said the other day, she said, who do you want to text? And, and I corrected her. I said, whom? <laughs> <laughs> but she got mad at the, me the other day. Yeah? I, I called her Alexis. Oh, no. Alexis. <laughs> She hadn't spoken for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what's wrong, but it's not downloading them, y'all. This is, see, this is not NBC or CBS. This is <laughs> Mark Lowry on his laptop with a can of oh, here, oh, here it is, here it is. Here, here we go, y'all. Okay. Oh. Okay, that just goes so far. Okay, that but that's the idea. Cool. That's cool. Don't y'all like that? That's cool. Je- Jesus is in Saint Clair, and Adam's got such a cool voice. Jesus is round the corner. Jesus is everywhere. I believe that, don't you? I do too. And I love that Bill Gaither. You still love Jesus, you know. A lot of the young people I'm finding out. Some are you seeing that some of the young people are not believing anymore? I just yeah, recently read the, the fella who wrote, uh, "I am a friend of God." is now an atheist and i read that online so i guess it's not gossip i don't know and if i'm wrong somebody tell me but how do you how do you have how can you have tasted of the heavenly gift gloria and then quit believing tell me well i first of all i don't think that shakes god up right and i don't think the end of the story is told and if we have to if we have to go back to square one and start from scratch so be it Okay. What do you mean by that? I mean sometimes we have hands down so they won't say the same sometimes you have to you have to start over and make make your faith your own. I think a lot of kids grow up and are sort of tagging along on their parents. So it's tales. a deconstructing of what it's a you deconstructing were so that you can reconstruct. Right. I don't know, but um I I I think that the um the process right now for kids is they want to see the real thing and they want to see it in action. Um, and there is a real effort, I think, and almost a brainwashing, I think, in many secular universities to just strip the kids of everything that has anything to do with God. It's the enemy of of um, the thought right now that's being taught. But it's always been there. That's yeah, always Yeah, but I'm been saying there. that does not shake up God. No, right. He isn't going uh, anywhere. So what would you tell somebody, kid? Absolutely. But don't argue with them. I don't think a baby has ever been argued out of the womb. I think talk um, with them, but love them and, and, and try to show them Jesus, wouldn't you say? I think, well, if you haven't done that already, there's right. no more. I mean, no. you just keep doing it. But... But I do, I do think you you listen to their to their protests, and sometimes they protest too much. Um, right. That, that I don't think that their their deep faith has gone as far away as you think. I think yeah. they've got to find it again for themselves. Well, thank y'all for being on my Monday show. Bill, quit looking at your watch. You used to get on Howard Goodman for doing that. No, no, I was second C. Do we have four minutes here? Yeah. Can I say something yeah, around this please, lady? Please, please. This lady, you always kid us yes, about, you know. you got all the time you want. <clears throat> about the arguing and everything, and that's... And, and, <laughs> that's and, a joke. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. But uh, married for 55 years, and I got to tell you, the last 10 years, I think, of our lives as... Mm. Would you say have been the best? Mm. Well, they've been really good. They have been very, very good. Uh, What's made the last 10 different? I think perspective. 
I think if you can keep it together and get through the tough times, and the tough times are many times in, you know, in midlife stuff, if you can get through that raising kids and, you know, and figuring out priorities, and I thank God for that. Not every, not everybody was able to do that. Yeah. And, and, I don't, and I don't make any judgments because it takes two people to make a marriage. Right. But I will say this, that, that, that if you can stick some of the tough times out, in fact, Reba and Donnie and Gloria and I wrote a, a tune called So Glad We Stayed. Oh, I love that. So, so, so glad, glad we, we stayed about your look marriage. What made, look, uh, look what we made. Um, a, a family and a million memories. Memories, you know. And, you know so uh, The history that you've built. I mean, yeah. just think if you traded her in for a 20-year-old. Yeah. You'd have to start. I figure I don't even want to talk to someone who can't remember when the space shuttle blew up, much less <laughs> live with them. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. the, all that history is gone yeah. when you leave your spouse. So I do want to say, and the reason I did look at my watch, I thought, you know, you know, you. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, that we, we do have a lot of fun when we are together. But, but the good news of finding somebody that, uh, is tapped in to the things that you think are important. And the cross was the center of our whole lives. Yes. Jesus was the center. And, uh, and, and, and still is. And the days when we didn't, didn't like each other. You know, loving each other was never the problem. Right. Just, there are just days when you don't. It's like in a vocal band. I mean, I, we always loved each other, but the days we didn't like each other. You sure. Know? But, but, but there was something bigger going on, you know, in our marriage, and it's true in any relationship. Relationships only happen when there's a bigger reason to do what you're doing. So I just want to take this chance to tell your viewers yeah. that, uh, that this has been a wonderful road. And 80 is really not that bad. Yeah. You know, I, I... You feel good, right? I really feel, I, I really do. I, I was in the studio all day doing, you know, you know what I love to do. I'll never forget when I told Dr. Hart, how, oh, I still got three minutes. You so got all the time you want. Okay. We're not on a time schedule. I remember Dr. Hart was with us on one of our cruises to speak. And he's written a lot on, he's written a lot on depression. And he said, uh, you know, a lot of your artists deal with depression. I, yeah. said, I, I, I said, I know that's true. And I said, well, I understand depression because when our kids were in high school and young adults, I was, you know, you know, I'm a control freak. Okay. And so I was just so worried. <laughs> I was so worried about, are, do they have enough stuff, you know, to make it, Right. you know, and, uh, and I dealt with depression, but I told him evidently mine was not clinical because I did not have to take uh, medication for it. He said, don't kid me. I said, what do you mean? He said, your work is your pill. Mm. You know what? He was right. To which I said, is that bad? He said, because, <clears throat> you know, my work was taking those beautiful videos, right. putting music to pictures, right. and honoring those dear old people and, right. doing, and doing it day and night, you know, and we did a ton of them. And I said, is that bad? He said, it's bad if that is all you are about. He said, you need to widen your pleasure center. And I think- Interesting, I widen your pleasure center. So you were getting your, your, your pleasure. I mean, because Gloria has always said the music was the mistress. Is that right? Did I misquote that? Mm. Is that a misquote? Because I remember the, he's never had a mistress, but he's had. But the music was I think like it, you could be talking to him at, at at Starbucks, and the music's on. He doesn't hear you because the music is like a naked woman walk by. All he can do is hear the music. I think I think addictions come in all different sizes and shapes, and it's not just you know alcohol or drugs. And they're not all bad, are they? Well. It, they it, can be bad. It, yes, they can. All addictions are bad. God will never be an addiction. Okay. He widens your pleasure base. <laughs> the closer you get to God, the more everything brings you joy. Kids bring you joy. The laughter in the street brings you joy. You know, oh, ice yeah, cream cone right. brings you joy. The closer you get to God, the wider your pleasure base. That's what true. Satan does is take even good things and narrow your pleasure base so that everything that brings you joy has to be crammed through that one tiny little in hole. Interesting. 
And then when he, you do that, then then you, you you're oblivious to your family, you're oblivious to your wife, you're oblivious to your friends. If you're just doing your your thing, and that is not good. Pastoring can be an addiction. Oh yeah, anything. I being guess. the authority can be the addiction to mm-hmm. being the guy mm-hmm. with the word. That can so be. So what the was your first step towards recovery from that? Well, you know what? Just on purpose, just simply say there's more stuff going on out here. And first of all, I think taking a lot more. One of the things you started doing is reading. You've read more in the last year or ten yeah. years than I remember you reading in your whole life. And he reads a lot of history. We spend a lot of time. One of the things that we really enjoy right now is that in the I, I get up about seven and make a coffee and you know have get my devotions and stuff. And then Bill gets up, gets his coffee, gets the newspaper, and then we stay in our kitchen until ten. Just those talking. are those are our time. That's our time, and I've always been a morning person, and I just love it that we you know we don't have anybody to interrupt the conversation, nobody to spill the milk, and you know when you're pouring yourself into your kids in your life, and of course traveling and all the things we did, now it it's it, all the wisdom that we have hopefully gathered, we can we can use that to all the frustrating news on on the TV or you know sports that are in the paper or whatever you know you get an eternal perspective to that and so our conversations are longer and deeper and better because we have time to actually have them I and mean, you know what would be so wonderful for your children if you would eat just record those conversations like literally just a phone just for your kids yeah, because i want to tell you to i would I want love them to, make to their have conversation. I, I would just love to hear what of course they'll have your albums but i would love to hear what my grandparents sounded like i have forgotten it's been so long you know you forget and i want to encourage you if you got grandparents please pull out your iphone and ask them to tell you stories because you will yeah. treasure those one day something else you want to share Come on, I, I, share I, it. I want, I, I want to share this there one. There were two more lyrics. Okay, you go get them. Um, no trip now. There's wires everywhere. I won't. Oh, one of the things that we have read is uh, we've read a lot, and, and we also watch a lot of videos. Um, our, our favorite thing is to, to watch good movies at night, but yeah. we've watched everything that... On Netflix? No. No? Uh, we, we, we buy DVDs so we can watch them when we please, and we don't oh. have to... Okay. Well, you can Mess watch the Netflix TV. when you please, too. Well, a lot of the things we watched aren't probably even on there. Okay. But we've watched everything on Bonhoeffer. We've uh, watched everything on Luther. We you know, we get on kicks and watch everything or read everything about them. Right. And we just came through the 500th year anniversary of, of the Reformation, of course. And that involved a lot of people. And because of that, a lot of things were published last year <clears throat> by... Uh, uh, Calvin, Wesley, uh, Erasmus, um, Luther, all, all the people that were, were coming to a revival in Tyndale. their spirit, Tyndale. Um, and, and so we, out of that, we said, you know, it, it's time in our culture, I think, to nail some things. I think one of our mistakes is, as Christians has been we... We elevated too many things to the cardinal level, like what do you wear, what your hair look like, how, how white are your jeans, you know, what do our kids, you know, do they cut their hair, make it too long, right. too, too short, too many, and all of that stuff was elevated to to absolute level, and honestly, what comes right down to it, there are about five things you'd give your life for, right. and the rest of the stuff, you know, our cultural preferences that come and go, and what what is like oh this is those that was wild kids this year it'll be something else next year and the same with us i think we have theological fads we all follow those silly trails on but um we wrote we we kept talking about this so is this so new this or old yeah or this is old um or this new. is new yeah. Stuart townen who is the writer from uh, ireland a- ireland that, that was at our songwriting intensive this last year he stayed over and wrote with us a day, and he and Bill were working with this melody. And um, and this really came from reading Luther and a lot of the, we listened to a, a, a tape of actual Luther's uh, talk before. <coughs> can read it. Uh, before the stand. So here's what we wrote. 
here I stand, I can do no other. That is Luther's line. I love that line. Exactly. I too. It is, it is what such love demands. I cannot nor will denounce him. He is sure, and here I stand. I am clean, for he is holy. I can know, for I am known. I am free by his grace and mercy. I am brave, for I am not alone. Here's the second verse. We are kings and priests of glory. We are heirs to a vast domain. We declare there is no other, trusting in the master's name. Here I stand, I can do no other. It's the least that love demands. I cannot nor will denounce him. The word is true, and here I stand. Amen. The creator is our father. His love reaching is the Christ. Breath and power are the spirit in, his, in this holy dance of life. Narrow, narrow gate leads to abundance, infant birth, eternal life, seed of faith, a tree of courage. I cannot help but testify, here I stand, I can do no other. It's the least such love demands, I cannot nor will denounce him. The word is true, and here I stand. And that's about all. Amen. That's the that stuff. That needs to be put in. Oh, sorry. Sorry, y'all, this is not ABC. Hey, that <laughs> needs to be put into a plaque. I would love to just read that every morning, because that well, is that's, that's, all, that's a statement it, right? of faith. Yeah, it's Isn't a statement that about of the faith. list of what you would give your yeah, life for? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, here's okay. another song, a song, right. that, a song that we just recorded. All right. An acorn grows a mighty oak. A stream can cut through rock. A house becomes a home sweet home. A baby learns to walk. Paint will be a masterpiece, and words can be a rhyme. A boy can turn into a man. Good things just take time. Don't give up. Don't give in. That hill was made to climb. With some food and fortitude, you will be just fine. Great is worth its weight in gold. Easy ain't worth a dime. Stay in for the long, long haul. Good things just take time. A child can be a wise man. A sinner can be a saint. A brick can be a temple. A link can be a chain. Some notes can be a love song. Some steel can be a chime. A moment can last forever. Good things just take time. <laughs> oh, Don't give up. You're still writing. Don't give in. That hill was made to climb. With some food and fortitude, you will be just fine. Great is worth its weight in gold. Easy ain't worth a dime. Stay in for the long, long haul. Good things just take time. Is it up, Tampa? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boom, 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 Don't give up. Don't give in. That hill was made to climb. With some food and fortitude, you will be just fine. Great is worth its weight in gold. Easy ain't worth a dime. Wait, 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 wait. Great. Great is worth it. It's weight in and gold. gold. Easy ain't worth a dime. Staying for the long, long haul. Good, good, good things just take time. I, I've got to call. I've, he I've, can I've, hear all this in his head, y'all. It's freaky. He hears every part in that head of his, even though he can't always get it out. But you're hearing all of it, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, I hear it all. And and I'm doing the best I can do because my three front teeth I had, I finally outlived my teeth. Mark. Oh, no. They all, you know, I, I, I had little pegs that I could put uh, put crowns on. Right. And my dentist, who is uh, who who is Drillum Billum or Drillum Fillum Billum. Drillum Fillum yeah, Billum. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's his. That's uh, funny. That, that's his motto. <laughs> Drillum Fillum <laughs> Billum. That's funny. And 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 uh, and, uh, and his favorite song is. Crown bill with many crowns because everything, everything in, in there was filled. So what's so? So the three front teeth are gone, and this is what they call a slipper. Okay, and, and, don't take it off. No, no, I'm not. It, it there's, there's a big. All it, I want for Christmas is my two front so, teeth. So, so if if I if I'm talking a little bit with. With, I hear a little bit of a list, uh, uh, but it goes good with your stutter. Yeah, but with three <laughs> uh, three more months, you'll have. They're gonna put screws up in the uh, in, in in the bone. Ooh, in in in, in the now bone. Now he's got bone in place. Not so cadaver bone. You know bones. what you say? Yeah. No, I got cow. I got cow bone. <laughs> I, I had two no, choices. No, you did. You did not get cow. Hey, y'all. Yeah. You got another one, Bill? 
So maybe it, his teeth will go to Walmart, like your leg. Chief, yeah. yeah. Are you going to have cadaver bones put in? Well, we're glad you're you're uh, okay. Well, let's say, do, leave us with one more great lyric because we. This is. Have y'all enjoyed okay. Mondays with Mark tonight with it, Bill and Gloria? What are you reading, I'm make sure I have read thoroughly it. enjoyed it. Thank y'all. Would y'all do this again sometime when you got more new songs? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I loved it. But here is an okay. old one that that I think needs to be said again. Okay. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day when God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I like this line. I've noticed all the bad news. We wrote this. 30 years ago. Wow. I've noticed all, all the, the bad news in the, the paper. paper. Seem like things are going and getting bleaker, bleaker every day. day. Kind of sound like but now. But for this child of God, it, it makes, makes no difference. Because things are going to get, get better either, either way. way. <laughs> what, what's I've line? never what's been more thrilled, thrilled about tomorrow. tomorrow. Sunshine's, Sunshine's always old. bursting through the clouds of gray. I just, I just feel like something, something good, good is about to happen. And brother, it could be just any day. Hey, y'all. Right where you are, if you want to know the Lord, this Lord we've been talking about, you can, right where you are, you can invite him in, can't they? Absolutely. 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 And we love you. And I will see you next Monday night at what Jonathan A. Martin, not the singer, the preacher, will be my guest. And I look forward to you. I love you guys. I love that you tune in. And I'm, I'm enjoying this. And we'll keep doing it till we get bored. <laughs>